fly on the wall <laughs> <laughs> rockumentary. And it is an absolute pleasure to welcome along to the BBC to Mr Liam Watson. How are you sir? I'm, I'm very well thank you. I would now lay on a, a shovels full of flattery to you by saying this show's actually been up and running for about four months now. Probably a week hasn't passed by when I haven't said the words and that was produced by Liam Watson. Well, that's <laughs> nice to hear. Great. <laughs> um, because it is by your production skills and, uh, of course, the studio that you run, uh, known as Toe Rack Studios, uh, that has provided us with a, a lot of music that we've been enjoying on this show and the listeners have been enjoying as well. Um, but it's not an overnight sensation story, is it, Liam? No, it's not. It's more like <laughs> over ten years sensation story. You know. My idea for the studio was to create a complete vintage studio, like a complete time warp studio. And this was in, say, 1991. So you'd walk in and there would be literally, you know, a complete setup of uh, how a studio would have been in 1963 or something. You know, something like that was what I uh, originally intended. And that's not how we've gone. And that is not, I wouldn't want to run a studio like that. Um, it would be really nice, you know, but I, it wouldn't get any work. This is definitely a trade secret. Johnny, yeah. how did that feel to you? Good. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Um, is everything okay in there? You can hear everything enough? Should we uh, put one on tape? Right here from the top, yeah. Oh. All that, I'd always really, really liked pop music when I was a, you know, a toddler, as it were. You know, I used to watch Top of the Pops with my parents and brothers and sisters. And um, also my mum and dad were big fans of the Beatles and they had the records. They were the first records I started listening to when I was, uh, you know, seven or something. I can remember actually wanting to put Beatles records on. If something is in the studio, it's because I think it's a good bit of gear and I want to use it for certain things. And I don't mind whether it's old or, or new or whatever. I mean, the fact is that most of the stuff is kind of uh, vintage gear, you know. A lot of the vintage equipment we acquired came from the BBC. When um, we were first starting the studio, the BBC had a place called the Redundant Stores that um, we'd go along to if you were in the uh, industry and you could go up and buy some of the old equipment that had been offloaded from their various studios around the country. And we got a lot of good old bits and pieces from them. Bought some of the uh, EMI Abbey Road gear from uh, a sale that Abbey Road had called the Sale of the Century. My favourite bit of kit would probably be the EMI Red 17 mixing desk or the EMI BTR tape recorder. I mean, this is top quality gear, you know, it's top quality equipment. What I do with it, or what I, you know, the engineers I use do with it is the sound. It's not really the studio. I'm not really that bothered anymore. I think I've got what I need, you know. A lot of 60s stuff has really influenced me, you know. Sort of old British recordings done in the early 60s. Some of the sort of drum sounds and things, and, uh, and the way that they would approach those recordings being more of a, a live-based uh, approach to record production is the way I've always liked to do it.
to be about the right place there, I'd say. The right level. The White Stripes came to Toe Rag on their first tour of the UK where I'd met them and we had you know, mutual friends um, from Detroit. Some, uh, a couple of guys from a band called The Henchmen had been over here a couple of months before the White Stripes had come over and they'd popped into the studio and we'd done a little bit of recording for, for fun really, you know, it wasn't a serious recording. And I think that they'd gone back to Detroit raving about the studio and told the White Stripes about it. So when I met them, they were very interested in coming to see the studio. Uh, they came to see the studio, really liked it, and that's how we uh, ended up working together. People seemed to get quite excited that this big selling record was from a, you know, a, a small independent studio, and also that it was a, you know, a bit of a different studio to most of the studios around at the moment. And it really affected the studio as in suddenly I was very, very busy and very, very in demand and, uh, you know, had some kind of credibility. As long as we're producing good recordings and, uh, you know, hopefully successful, commercially successful recordings as well would, is always a bonus. But as long as we're producing good records, there's always going to be people interested. It's a, uh, a commercial recording studio. I'm the owner of the studio and how I feel about um, record production is reflected in the um, facilities available at the studio. You can produce a better record without the aid of uh, computers. And that's what we have here, you know. It's not for everyone, but uh, that's probably... We won't get audio computers here. I know that. 